Okay, uh, thanks for sticking with me. And if you've uh, been listening to these, uh, this is going to be a little bit different uh, video. Um, I'm actually reposting this. So this is uh, similar to the previous mean reversion uh, synthetic future strategy that I just posted uh, a little bit earlier. Um, I noticed that there was a lot of background noise. Um, so I'm just uh, reposting. So you'll probably hear me say a lot of, of uh, the same things, but it would just be significantly clearer this time. Um, so these, uh, this video is going to be significantly different um, than the previous ones I've been posting, uh, which dealt with uh, the uh, uh, Treasury issuance, uh, the Federal uh, Reserve reducing its size of uh, its balance sheet, um, and then some of the uh, GDP and uh, crude oil uh, forecasts as well as some of the uh, forecasts for the S&P 500. Um, so this um, just deals with a specific trading strategy, um, and it's a uh, trading strategy uh, that involves uh, creating synthetic futures. Um, it's a long ball strategy. Uh, it's a mean reversion strategy. And uh, you're ultimately using options. And uh, the main reason that you're using options versus going into the futures market um, is that implied volatility over the course of uh, the last uh, few years um, has been uh, extraordinary, extraordinarily uh, low. Um, also, uh, realized volatility has been low as well. Um, so it's a little bit cheaper um, at different points in time to actually uh, utilize the options market to create synthetic futures exposure so that you don't have to go into the futures market and post collateral or um, post additional margin to, uh, to maintain those future positions. And it also gives you an asymmetric return in the sense that you're, you know your uh, profit and, well you know your, your loss, the most you can lose uh, with options versus uh, futures contract. And, and again, it's more of an exposure. Um, it's cheaper to gain the same amount of exposure uh, to a futures contract or to gain uh, the same amount of exposure to uh, 10 or 15 future contracts. A little bit cheaper through the options market, again, due to the low implied volatility. Um, the, the goals of the strategy, um, it's basically to, it's basically, uh, the first goal would be to extract the difference between realized volatility and implied volatility. Um, again, that's, that's ultimately just a, a fancy way to say that you're attempting to profit from a carry trade. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the carry is basically uh, um, extracting um, a higher realized from the implied volatility. Uh, there's uh, mean reverting uh, based on one standard deviation. Uh, to the left, um, you would buy. And if there's uh, one standard deviation to the right, uh, you would sell. Um, so if it's a, um, it's ultimately a mean reversion play where you're anticipating that if the market were to drop, uh, let's say um, 1.25%, uh, which is about one standard deviation to the left, uh, you would go in there and buy with the expectation that the market's ultimately going to mean revert uh, back to uh, 0 0.5 or 0.37% uh, by the end of the week um, or by the end of uh, a couple week period. Um, and then the opposite is that if the market were to rally and go up uh, close to uh, 2% or maybe 1.75 to 1.8%, uh, you would sell um, with the expectation that um, the market ultimately, ultimately mean revert back to uh, where it was, uh, which would be uh, the mean of about 0 0.37 or 0 0.4. Um, so there's uh, portfolio uh, realized volatility associated with the strategy of about 16 uh, percent to about 20 percent um, and you know if, if if you're uncomfortable with that amount of volatility there's ways to actually reduce uh, volatility by actually lowering the overall port volatility by selling variance into the market which is a, a short vol strategy um, via writing uh, straddles and uh, or covered calls on long stock positions that you currently hold in the portfolio um, again you're just generating income through through uh, through uh, premiums um, but it, it suppresses uh, the volatility associated with being a, uh, a premium buyer. Um, you kind of just offset that by being a premium seller. Uh, so the other part of the strategy is that you, you want to buy um, premium uh, contracts that expire 90 to 180 days. Uh, it gives the portfolio a significant amount of Vega exposure. Um, the other thing is that you um, also want to add uh, directional gamma by uh, not only buying the 90 to 80 day, 180 day contracts, but also buying uh, 15 uh, below 30 days. So between uh, two weeks and, and 30 days um, ultimately. And, and that gives you a directional 
uh, short dated options, uh, which provide additional convexity and, and a bit higher gamma, so that you're not just completely uh, exposed to Vega. Um, and it also gives the uh, the portfolio a kick, um, so it it, uh, it gives it uh, a, a better chance of uh, being uh, positively skewed. Um, if you're able to again position those shorter data contracts um, in this synthetic future strategy um, properly with the long contracts, there are some risk associated with the uh, the shorter data contracts. Um, but again, it's, it provides a significant amount of uh, uh, convexity and, uh, and gives you higher exposure to gamma. Um, and that those short bursts uh, can be uh, a big game changer for, for uh, this particular strategy. Um, so the strategy typically pr produces uh, results similar to a CTA trend following. Um, and again, that's due to the asymmetric and convex uh, return profile. Um, so if the strategy is executed properly, uh, it can produce uh, the holy grail of returns. Um, and what do I mean by that? Um, ultimately, portfolio returns are positively skewed. Uh, they have relatively medium kurtosis. Uh, they offer excess alpha compared to market portfolios, which is probably the biggest thing. And then I guess one of the best parts about it is that it, it's uncorrelated risk um, to the uh, to the market. Um, so uh, the uh, also, the other benefit too is what I talked about a little bit earlier: is that it's cheaper than posting uh, margin to acquire similar future exposure, if implied, and realized volatility remain low. Again, that's partly due to the asymmetric payouts. So then I just added a couple additional things that um, there's some strategy tailwinds. Um, so a uh, a tailwind meaning a good burst of of of, of positive. Um, uh, influence into the uh, into this portfolio. Uh, so a rise in implied volatility on the index, uh, Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average, because this was a, uh, a, a synthetic futures on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Um, so on DIA, which been, would, would be the ETF where you'd, you'd be putting the options on. Um, so so if you get uh, uh, implied volatility between 12 to 16, um, that's, that's a pretty good tailwind. Um, and if you get the rise in realized volatility, uh, between 12 to 18. Um, ultimately, this is a, an extraordinarily profitable strategy if you can extract uh, a carry on the uh, realized portion of the trade, meaning that you're, what you paid for the implied, uh, if you're able to, to get a carry on the realized, uh, it becomes an extraordinarily profitable uh, trade. And, and again, due to the mean reversion uh, as associated with it. Um, it's a strategy that works extraordinarily well, probably if it's systematically programmed into a computer. Um, versus having a, a human trader um, that's going to be prone to uh, psychological and um, emotional uh, attachments to the position where you kind of break the rules um, of, of keeping yourself toward uh, one standard deviation, you know, buy, one standard deviation, sell. Um, so the, uh, the strategy headwinds um, ultimately revolve around uh, dynamic hedging. And a lot of the negative convexity and negative gamma um, that can create significant amounts of volatility. Uh, sometimes it can work in your favor. Um, I guess a good example would be what typically happens in, in the market um, on a down day, uh, again, due to uh, uh, dynamic hedging and, and uh, some of the negative, negative convexity of market makers. Um, you know, usually you get the, uh, the, the after 3.30 or 3 o'clock um, significant uh, uh, sell-offs uh, that, that, that tend to accelerate toward the end of the close. Um, so again, if you're positioned and you were at, you happen to be uh, short, or short, or you had a uh, a uh, put position at this point on the synthetic futures, it benefits you. But uh, typically, it can work against you if you're um, if you're not positioned correctly. Um, the other the other uh, strat uh, strategy headwinds are uh, short volatility strategies uh, that suppress realized uh, volatility, um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of those strategies, <clears throat> excuse me. Ultimately, I'm referring to uh, share repurchases, um, call overriding, and just having uh, the Federal Reserve balance sheet expansion, which tends to uh, uh, suppress uh, overall market volatility. Um, the Fed plays a pretty important role in suppressing overall market volatility because they have a significant, um, uh, uh, significant amount of exposure to the mortgage-backed security market which tends to have to be dynamically hedged uh, via shorting treasuries or interest rate swaps. Um, and as long as they hold it on their balance sheet, they're not hedging that exposure. So there's not a lot of uh, volatility in the, mar in the, in the, uh, in the uh, bond market, um, which typically would transfer over to the stock market. So it kind of creates that sort of low uh, suppressed volatility um, environment. 
Um, but but um, because you're um, using a mean reversion synthetic future strategy that's, that is long volatility, it ultimately uh, can suppress your returns or, or lower your returns uh, going forward. Um, so anyway, uh, I thought I'd share that, and I thought it was uh, pretty... Um, pretty uh, interesting thing to share and uh, if you like it um, I'll probably have some more uh, trading uh, strategies that I'd be willing to share that that uh, I used in the uh, the first year that I traded um, so I could talk a little bit about dispersion trading um, that I used uh, which wasn't typ typically the uh, investment banking sort of version of dispersion trading I also did some dividend capture strategies and uh, I was really fond of uh, stock replication strategy. So uh, this is just a bit of, of discussion of the synthetic future strategy. Um, so hope you like it. And uh, there will be more um, videos to come that, that could be uh, related to this, this stuff as well as uh, some more of the um, market uh, forecast.